Yo. Yo, 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 yo. Yo. What's up, guys? What's up, what's up, what's up? Can y'all hear me? Yo, 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 yo. What's up, guys? There's a lot to get into. A lot, a lot. I feel like I always say that, but this time, like, there's never not a lot to talk about. But this time, there truly is a lot to talk about. So I'm putting on a game that I can just, like, sleepwalk through. <laughs> so, yeah, I've played this a million times. But anyway, how's everyone doing, man? It's good to see you guys. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? What's up? Ray says, 915 in the house. What's up? <laughs> Appreciate you guys. A lot of you guys are already here, man. <laughs> Love the April Fool's bit. We'll get into that. <laughs> What's up? What's up, everyone? Just waiting on everybody to come in. Math Tiger with the super chat. Appreciate it, dude. Uh, says, Trank, your April Fool's video killed. <laughs> Thank you. I had a lot of fun putting that one together, man. Like, well, I'll get into it. I'll get into, like, the process, the behind the scenes, if you guys are interested in that. Uh, just let me, like, to let you guys know um, how it went. And and the and the <laughs> responses I've been getting, to. <laughs> we'll get into all that. Um, yeah, browse it. So, okay, guys, I'll... I'll <laughs> Oz was already with the with the references to the video <laughs> but um uh about this dynamite i don't know guys it's been a while since i've ranted right you guys want to rant tonight <laughs> just kidding i'm not gonna like necessarily rant there were uh things i really enjoyed on the show and things i really didn't enjoy so it was kind of like a, it was a weird dynamite i think it was like a <sighs> I think it was five out of ten because half of it I loved, half of it I kind of didn't. So, well, not even half I didn't love. So it was six out of ten maybe, but even that feels a little too generous. We'll get into it. Um, <laughs> Oz, thanks again for the super chat, man. He says, "Eat McDonald's and play Fortnite, Trank." <laughs> That's all I do because I consume things that are number one. But um, before I get into the Dynamite review, guys, because the opening of Dynamite actually uh, relates to to what I'm about to talk about. Um, I guess we should start off with the with the CM Punk interview that he did with Ariel Hawani because, like I said, it's important for the context of the opening promo on AEW today. Um, first of all, <laughs> I want to start by saying, obviously, I am a a Punk fanboy, so my opinion is going to be skewed. But with that being said, uh. I have things to say about this, even as a fanboy that, that were like, you know, like, like punk punk, I'm going to let you have it, bro. And I think all the punk haters in the, in the chat are going to love it. <laughs> so, so strap in guys. Um, Oz, what? Thanks for the super chat, man. But what Willow is cringe. How, how could you even say that dude? She had a fantastic, she was one of the highlights of, of the show. She had a, a really great promo. But uh, but thanks for the super chat, man. <laughs> but I I cannot I cannot co-sign that opinion. I'm sorry, Oz. You're on your own on that one. I I'm pretty sure you're on your own, like <laughs> on that one. But uh, what uh, what's it called, guys? So CM Punk got interviewed by Ariel Hawani. Ariel Hawani is famously a WWE paid shill these days. It is what it is. Um, so before I even get into what CM Punk talked about in the interview, guys, I want to say that um. I honestly thought it was going to be worse. So on, on that front, um, it wasn't like, it wasn't horrendous, but I, I, I thought there was a lot of stuff that he said that was, um, oh wait, what am I doing? That was pretty, uh, he contradicted himself so many times in, in this same interview. So um, before I get into it, let me just read these super chats. Oz, thanks again, man. Yo, scapegoat, I love your work young bucks on fire right now f corporate money punk <laughs> thanks again man tranquilo restaurant is open he about to cook says shinku <laughs> thanks man i appreciate i appreciate the love from you guys okay um where do i even start with the punk thing uh 
he so I, I found it funny. I'll start off with this, I guess. I found it funny that the worst thing he can say about Tony Khan is that he's too nice. Like, it's so funny, right? Like, in a, in a world where, where wrestling promoters are, are truly evil people, his biggest uh, criticism of, of Tony Khan was like, no, nah, he's too nice. He's not a boss. Like, and you know, like, like you, you can think whatever you want about that. Like, but I, I just thought, like, <laughs> in the grand scheme of wrestling, I thought that it was funny that, that that's the worst thing you can say about Tony. But, um, but yeah, man, like, he, he said a lot of things that, like, kind of... So he basically, you know, tore down AEW, like, a little bit. Like, like I said, it wasn't as bad as I thought he was going to... Um, as bad as I thought it was going to be. But he did say things like, oh, they're not running a business. They're all about good matches. So, so let me, let me start with that. Like, what a weird thing to say, considering he's one of the, the godfathers of indie wrestling, where storytelling was, was primarily told through the in-ring stuff. And it, so one thing I'll say is that throughout this whole interview, it just, it, it baffled me just how truly, like, fed-pilled CM Punk is now. Like, he like when so and it's funny because when he was like doing the pie bomb and all that he was so anti WWE and all this and now he's like so fed pilled bro that's the only way I can put it like when he said that the worst thing to happen to wrestling is guaranteed money I was like are you serious like work like aren't you the guy who's all about workers rights like what so. I thought that was absolutely baffling that he said one like that was the one thing that I truly, truly 100 percent had a problem with. And I and I pushed back on like I uh, I said, nah, that's 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 complete BS, dude. Like like <laughs> wrestlers getting paid after wrestlers finally getting paid after being underpaid for so many years is the least thing, the last thing, sorry, that any anybody should be complaining about the last thing like. I don't care if he meant it in the way that oh it'll keep people um motivated like I, I I don't I don't even care if he meant it like that like no that's not true like like you think you think Will Osprey is gonna phone it in now just because he you know he finally got a, a a big paycheck like no he's not like the top is the top for a reason like I like these people don't like it might be true for like people on the undercard right like they might just be phoning it in and and that's fine like they're they're allowed to do that like like. I think it's pretty based to get paid to do nothing. Like I wish I could do that. I kind of do with YouTube, but <laughs> but even then, I I still have to do something. But uh, it was it, to me that was the that was the dumbest thing he said in the whole podcast. To me, like that was that was absolutely just like like come on, bro. Like you're 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 really you're really walking back on on everything you built your persona on. Trash. So yeah, um, can't believe I missed that. But uh, so he said that, and um, just just the, the other things about AEW. Like another thing that I that that really struck me was how he said Colt Cabana had previously tried talking to him in in AEW, and that Punk just straight up told him, "I'm not talking to you without a lawyer." So. So in a way, I, I kind of understand him not wanting to talk to, to Cabana without lawyer. But bro, so you're telling me all of this could have been avoided if Punk just decided to say, okay, I'll talk to you. Like, but like make it like, or he could have at least told him like, I like, no, nah, it's like, I'm not going to talk to you. We, we, like, it doesn't have to be weird. Like, to, but that's it. But he just straight up said, I'm not talking to you without my lawyer. Like, he could have said, look, I like, you know, we're, we're just we're co-workers at this point and that's it that like I, I have no problem with you like <sighs> can you guys tell like in other words i think it's so i think it's so funny that cm punk admitted to doing so much of the stuff that he admitted to because in my in my eyes i can't speak for anyone else in my eyes it made him look worse like so like how he said oh i'm i i'm all about um like shooting from the hip. I'm I'm paraphrasing here. He was like, "Oh, I I I'm a guy who makes you think it's real cuz I go off script." Like with the counterfeit bucks thing, he said, "If if you took that as a shot at someone, then so be it." He said something like that. And bro, 
then how are you mad at Hangman, bro? <laughs> how are you mad at Hangman for shooting? <laughs> like, what? Like, I'm tell like I'm telling you, man. Like, I was defending Punk. <laughs> you guys know me. You guys know me. I was defending Punk. And the thing is, this is all coming directly from him. So it's not like I'm I'm believing anybody else's words. I'm I'm calling him out on his own words, not on anybody else's words, on his own words, bro. And he was just like so basically he's he was saying oh only i can only i can go off script if anybody else goes off script then uh you know i'm gonna get i'm gonna get mad and it was just so so dumb bro so he basically said aw is not about not a real business and he said it's not they it's not what they sold him aw was aw was sold to him as an alternative and that it didn't end up being an alternative i was like what's an alternative in your eyes bro What's an alternative in your eyes? Hold on, let me catch up on Super Chats, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Before I start ranting again. Shinku says, if CM Punk was a weak draw, no first dance for Punk. Well, yeah, that's pretty pretty obvious, but... But yeah, guys, like, you know you know what I'm saying, right? Like, I'm not... I'm criticizing him for, for his own words. Like, he's basically... Like I said, he contradicted himself left and right in this interview, and I, I just, I couldn't have been more disappointed, bro. Like, what am I gonna? Oh, I'm cooked. <laughs> and, and yeah, man. So the whole thing just seemed weird. Like how he refused to talk to uh, Cabana, and he said that so smugly while, you know, um, giving the young bucks. Uh, like uh, a hard time for not wanting to talk to him the whole thing was just really really like he would say one thing <laughs> and, and praise himself for it and then criticize others for doing the same thing it's it was so bizarre and and all his uh stands because don't get me wrong I, I i i consider myself a hardcore cm punk fan but not a not a stan at least not anymore um all his stands were like yas queen go off and, and stuff like that and it was just, it was cringe. I think he came off pretty bad in this, and I couldn't be more disappointed, man. <laughs> so, so yeah, he basically, he he tore down AEW. Did I miss anything else? I, I really don't think the other parts were that important. Um, he obviously took shots at Tony Khan and and the business model of, of AEW. Um, so that's important to talk about because... Um, Tony Khan, thankfully, didn't respond. He didn't tweet or anything. Like I, I was hoping he would just, you know, remain quiet on the whole thing, and uh, and uh, so Dynamite opened up with a promo from Adam Copeland, <laughs> of all people, man. Like I didn't expect uh, Adam Copeland's promo to be on this, but uh, he basically, you know, he gave the the raw raw speech the. Let's go. I love AEW. AEW saved pro wrestling. I thought it was funny. Like, like it didn't, like, I, I think he got the point across like two minutes in, but he, but it went like three minutes more after the first two minutes. And I was like, okay, bro, I get it. I get it. Like, it was a cool promo. Don't get me wrong. But I was like, it could have been like a couple of minutes shorter than what it was. Cause at, at one point, like, I get it. That was Tony Khan's way of responding. And I think it was actually like a decent way. I know people are going to be mad. Like, oh, like he, he really sent Adam Copeland out there to do that. Like, maybe Adam Copeland wanted to do it, bro. Like, maybe, you know, like, he... Maybe he wanted he wanted to do it. Because, like, how Adam Copeland said in his promo, he said AEW, you know, was needed in pro wrestling. He said he's never had this much fun in pro wrestling in his entire career. Which is uh, crazy to me. But I'll, I'll take his word for it. <laughs> and um, he put over the locker room... And he, well, he straight up let us know that he was talking about Punk by saying, there's been a lot of negative BS over the past week, so let's focus on the positives. He, he said that, and I can see why people are going to get mad at that and, and think it's cringe. Like, I, I, <laughs> I, I can already see people are, are upset about it, but um, it was Tony Khan's uh, way of, of responding to, to the Punk interview. And it was better than, than him tweeting, that's for sure. But then again, uh, no matter what AEW does in 2024, they're gonna get uh, they're gonna get hate for it. That's just the nature of the beast. That's the that's the um, 
we live in a society. <laughs> I was going to say, that's the society we live in. Like, be a total edgelord and say we live in a society. <laughs> um, Jaden, super chat, thank you, says, AEW is not a business, but when Cabana wants to talk, he doesn't want to do business. Also, I'm actually excited for Perry and the Young Bucks run. I'm not going to lie. Well, thanks for the super chat, dude. Um, appreciate it. Appreciate the, all the love. But, um, yeah, I'm pretty hyped for to see what the Young Bucks and, and Jack Perry do. It's, it's going to be pretty good. But, yeah, man, that, that little tidbit about Colt Cabana that nobody is talking about. For some reason, everybody else is talking about, like, the AEW stuff, of course, because AEW, negative AEW news, um, draws, clicks, as you, if, as you saw with my April Fool's video. But hardly anyone is talking about the Colt Cabana bit where Punk straight up said, no, I refuse to talk to him. So you're telling me we could have avoided this? Like in five minutes right there. We could have avoided all of this. All of this. Like we could have had a perfect um, AEW. But then again, like I, I do believe in the theory that no matter what happened, even if um, they squashed this beef, um, something was going to eventually make CM Punk mad. So it is what it is. Um, what's the chat saying? <laughs> Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Smooth says, ironic how the guy who spent half his life in the Fed is more of a professional than the fake indie guy. <laughs> um, yeah, man, like Adam Copeland, Adam Copeland is, is uh, he's really proven me wrong on, on all fronts. Like this, this guy's a beast. And I'm actually hyped for, <laughs> I'm actually hyped for Penta versus Copeland next week. That's, an, that's another thing, but um. Yeah, man, this 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 whole interview was just really disappointing, and and I'm not even out here saying, oh f CM Punk, oh CM Punk, you like, uh, I'm I'm gonna burn your shirts that I have. I'm not gonna do that, guys. I still wear his shirts <laughs> whenever I can, but uh, it was just it was it was highly hypocritical. Like I I can call out uh one of my favorite wrestlers, you know, like it's it's okay. But yeah, um, so Adam Copeland basically addressed what Punk said. And that's that. I feel like um, with that being said, the, the fact that during WrestleMania week, um, AEW is being talked about, it, it, it shows <laughs> how much people like just can't go a single day without talking about AEW, bro. They need it for clicks. I'm not even saying that, oh, uh, it's good for AEW because I don't know about that. But it, do it does go that they can't talk about anything else because they're not they're not interesting enough to to talk about anything else and, and get uh, traffic. Even Ariel Helwani. Yes, even that guy. I don't care if he's like a quote unquote real journalist. He's not a real journalist, bro. He's out here doing shooting angles for WWE with uh, Rhea Repley and uh, Becky Lynch. That thing's a joke, bro. But yeah, man. So, <laughs> I guess that's all. That's I, the thing. That's pretty much we. I'll say about uh. The the punk interview, unless anybody wants to know any of my other thoughts on it. Do you want to know any of my other thoughts about that? Let me, because otherwise I'm I'm pretty over it. It feels like, it feels like it didn't make as much of a dent as the uh, the podcast that punk did with with Cabana. Back in 2014. Like it feels like this one just kind of came and went. It is what it is. But yeah, we transitioned to... Adam Copeland in introducing Will Ospreay for the opening match. Which was the Battle of Wills. Um, Will Ospreay versus Powerhouse Will Hobbs. And this was a pretty good match. Um... I like that face-off between Copeland and, and Osprey. And, dude, like, I don't know why, but this uh, this promo really made me excited for uh, the matches that Copeland's going to have in AEW because he has barely scratched the surface. You know what I'm saying? Like, this guy has... This guy is still, like, absolutely... has Is barely getting started in AEW, if, if you think about it. Like, he doesn't have... He hasn't had that many uh, different opponents yet, and, and that gets me hyped. 
But yeah, we had um we had uh this this match. Uh Will Ospreay uh did look like he had accidentally uh kind of he he knocked uh Will Hobbs when he hit what was it like a uh, what what was it that he hit? I don't even know the name of the move, but his knee hit uh uh will hobbs had when, when he came off the top rope and that looked pretty gnarly but uh thankfully will hobbs looked to be okay they still uh so osprey got the win and then they still shot the angle at the end of the match where they're like teasing uh they're still teasing uh like a breakup between the don Callis family and i think they should just like already go for it but then again i did see someone suggest that they might cost will osprey against brian danielson i just automatically assumed that billy goat is going to beat brian at dynasty but i don't know i think he might actually lose guys like i think they might uh i think it might they might cost him the match let's see Oz uh, super chat says i'm convinced he planted hausman to get brawl out going at the end of the day, Phil has no ethics or integrity. He's just Hogan with a trigger temper. I I honestly wouldn't doubt it if it was uh, premeditated. That fraud, uh, Ariel Hawani, asked him. And I, like Punk just denied it. Obviously, he wasn't going to say, yeah, because uh, I think that would have like like legal <laughs> ramifications. But uh yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt that if 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 he did plant uh, Nick Hausman Hausman, sorry if I'm saying his name wrong, um, in the crowd just for him to go on this rant. You know, one thing that one important thing that uh, that he did say was that uh, that he, at that point he he wanted out, and and like I knew it, but all this talk about wanting to hash it out with the elites i i guess that was all just like just bs like in other words everybody has gone their own separate ways and and like it's only a matter of time before something makes cm punk mad over there too like that's just that's just who he is bro like sadly that's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time but i can i can definitely say that this guy is is just <laughs> Always looking for trouble. Shinku says, Can we put Jericho to ROH Jericho washed and boring? I agree, man. Thanks for the super chat, Shinku. My good friend, Shinku. Um, then we had... Uh, so Sorry, I'll get into that because I, I was about to get into uh, Will Ospreay and uh, Powerhouse Hobbs had their match, uh, which led into Brian Danielson and Lance Archer. And uh, Brian ended up beating Lance Archer in a, in a pretty uh, decent match. Brian Danielson is incapable of having a bad match, so of course this was always going to be good. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Paul says, your thoughts on a guy who's been injured 80% of the time since he's come back to the sport, acting like everyone owes him respect in one direction only? Pretty much. Pretty much. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what he does. We'll see what he does next before he ultimately um just <laughs> uh just freaking loses it again man we'll see yeah lance archer i'm glad he's been getting more tv time because he has been gone for for so long and it's good to see him man it's good to see him here <laughs> frito's cat thanks for the super chat says thanks for calling out Ango is that is that how you say his name by the way? A Ango or An Anjo, and Russell Talk. Yeah, um, I think this is I combined two videos in one. I'll talk about it later. But this was pretty much my uh, calling out the other, calling out the clickbait YouTubers, but also a uh, an April Fool's video as well. So um, after the Brian Archer match. Um, we had this Chris Jericho promo, man. And he came out of the heel tunnel. I still don't care. <laughs> I don't care if he's turning heel. Like uh Hook said that the 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 gist of the promo was that they're gonna have a another tag team match. And I'm like, why? 
why? <laughs> and um, it's happening on Collision, I believe, this Saturday. I I really thought this Collision was gonna be like a a crazy card because uh, it was originally gonna go up against WrestleMania, but it got uh, it's being pushed back. I think for the the final four, I believe. Um, but yeah, so this card doesn't look special at all. I'm, I'm, you guys already know my, my thoughts on Jericho. This was one of those, this was one of the, the two things on this show that I truly, truly, uh, could do without. And I just think that Jericho needs to go, man, or at least take a really long break. Just take a long break. Take a long break. I don't like even if you try to reinvent yourself, it's it's not gonna work. Like the the <laughs> the, the burnout is real. I saw a stat on um I think it was Reddit that he's he's has only missed like how many dynamites? Like it was a it was a crazy number. Since twenty nineteen, he's only missed like I think like fifteen or something like that. Like that's a five year run where he's only missed fifteen T V episodes. That's insane to me. Oz says Lance needs to sync up with the righteous presentation. I think so too. I think that'd be sick. But yeah, man, like I'm, I'm so over Jericho. T to me, he's, uh, he's like nothing can, can make him entertaining in my eyes. <laughs> I'm, be I'm being honest. Like he's just, he's not it. He, he has, uh. He served his purpose in AEW. He got, he helped him get a, a TV deal. He was the biggest star at the time, but now it's just like, just go away, dude. Like I, he's consistently the one thing that makes me go like, why <laughs> every single week at this point, in in an era where Dynamite has been mostly pretty good, he's the one like, he's the one truly weird thing left on the show that I just don't don't consistently enjoy and uh that's really all i have to say about that i don't i don't want to rant this whole stream because <laughs> i have another rant to do back to back segments jay white versus billy gunn i i for the ones who were here for the collision stream last saturday i i kind of like warned y'all i said this needs to be a squash or else what are we doing it wasn't a squash. So what are we doing, bro? What are we doing with Jay White? There is absolutely zero reason why a uh, like sixty-year-old Billy Gunn should be intimidating, uh, dominating, and <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what other word to use. Having a competitive match with. Jay White, a man who main evented the Tokyo Dome, who who pinned Okada at Wrestle Kingdom, there is literally no reason for that, bro. I'm I'm telling you, this didn't help no one. It was it was honestly one of the worst AEW matches of all time. I'm not even exaggerating because you know AEW rarely has a bad match, like rarely, very rarely. I cannot remember a match that was this this bad on AEW TV. I'm telling you, this was horrible. I did not like this at all. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not beating around the bush or anything. I'm not gonna sh sugarcoat it. This was horrendous. Uh says Jericho's cute on wife and Tyler Q rents not helping. Yeah, um, his his wife is is a horrible person. Has horrible um beliefs. I yeah. So I I agree with you, Oz. I don't even want to like give her the time of day. Like Jericho is just, you know, like horrible. Him and his wife. But uh, <laughs> it was a squash for the for the wrong person. Yeah, guys, this was absolutely horrible, and I'm actually I'm actually so annoyed with what they're doing with Jay White. Like, you you really don't know what to do with Jay White. Like, literally anything is better than this, man. Like, I'm <laughs> literally anything. <laughs> it's like they chose the worst possible thing, and and it. Ah oh, man, you see, that's how mad I am. <laughs> but, like, it just it annoys me because Jay White is one of my favorites in AEW, and at this point, I'm like, you know, like a lot of people are repeating the he would have been better off in WWE, and like it's 
Like, it's hard to even fight back against that because how do you defend what he's doing right now? Like, ever since that MJF um, match at Full Gear, which I, I just absolutely hated everything about it, like, Jay White has, has been has been struggling man and the c2 i thought was the beginning of of his of his recovery in his presentation but not really and then i thought his match against darby allen was the beginning of his second recovery in presentation but apparently not really <sighs> yeah i'm sorry guys you guys you guys know i don't like to to come out here and rant that's not what i like to do especially not about AEW um but we gotta we gotta criticize the product when it when it deserves criticism like we gotta we can't just blindly praise ah (laughs) we just can't blindly praise everything like we're like wwe fans like i i'm not gonna do that at least that's not me if i don't like something i'm gonna i'm gonna point it out so yeah like uh that whole WWE thing, that whole Jay White would have been better off in WWE thing is, is irrelevant at this point. Let's talk about how he's being used in AEW and he's being used horrible. Like, and I just, they the sooner this, this horrible feud ends, the, the better. Because having Jericho and then this in back-to-back segments, I was really like, oh man. Oh man, this, this episode is in trouble. This episode is in, is in trouble. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Just just do better with Jay White. I, I don't even know how. I don't know. I can't add anything more. More. Uh, I can't add any more to that. Just do better with Jay White. Like this is this is ridiculous, bro. I even when they uh, unify the the trios titles, they gotta do something. Put them in a feud with with uh, Ozzy Open or someone. Once, once everybody's healthy, just do something, bro. Shinku says WWE fans would hype up a plate of beep for WrestleMania 40. I mean, yeah, they have a tendency to to hype up mid, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that because this was this was worse than mid. This was horrible. So. Yeah, the acclaimed. I don't know. They, they, they hardly got a pop, man. Was it? Wasn't it crazy? They hardly got a pop. This whole thing just had a dead, silent crowd, which made it all the more painful. I'm not kidding, guys. This is one of the worst, one of the worst AEW matches of all time. And I know, I just know someone's gonna comment after the fact, um, and be like, like you're complaining too much. It's so crazy that me, the most pro AEW YouTuber, is sometimes told. That he complains too much. Like, what? I still... I still... Ah, man. I still don't understand that. <laughs> I hardly complain, guys. I actually think I'm too uh, too forgiving with some of these AEW segments. I give them the benefit of the doubt uh, pretty often. But this... I couldn't do that with this. But... Let's see. Mr. Corona says, When Juice comes back, he needs to remind Jay and the guns who they are. Yeah, absolutely. I think Juice's absence a hundred percent plays a, a role in in this and their presentation. But yeah, guys, we gotta hold uh we gotta hold these companies accountable. I want to enjoy what I watch. I don't want to complain about what I watch. Don't get me wrong, but most of the show is good. But the parts that are bad are just for some reason really bad, and I don't I don't know why. <laughs> it's weird. The parts that are good are really good parts that are bad are really bad but with that being said i assume they're gonna set up that match i i I would i thought they i really thought they were gonna do it at super card of honor unless did i miss that they announced it or something you see even someone in the chat is telling me it's a weekly it's a weekly show chill you see the one time i complain someone tells me to stop complaining (laughs) you see that's what i'm talking about don't be like WWE fans, guys. It's okay. It's okay to criticize. It's not like I'm saying, oh, F A W, they're gonna die. It's not like I'm saying that either. Um, I'm still in good spirits. 
I know they'll bounce back with a good episode next week, hopefully. So, yeah, it's not the end of the world. I'm just saying this was really bad. It's okay to criticize one bad segment on a show. But, uh, so leave it to, um, Willow Nightingale to save, um, this episode immediately after those segments, man. After those bad back-to-back segments. She, she went out and cut a really good babyface promo, man. Like, uh, talking about, you know, her, her starting up in wrestling and how she's like essentially, you know, like, uh, how do you say an, an unorthodox, um, wrestler, how, you know, like, uh, that, yeah, like she's the, she's, she goes against all the stereotypes in wrestling, right? And, and the crowd was just going crazy, man. I was actually surprised by, by how crazy the crowd was going. I was like, that's what's up, man. <laughs> so this, this was a phenomenal promo. Um, I know my, my friend Oz here <laughs> said earlier in the stream that, uh, it was cringe, but nah, man, this is, a, this is a really good promo and, and, um, all all the props to to willow for for going out there and and reviving a, a dead crowd man like after that promo i was like how can you not give her the title like at this point you know like uh because because was if i'm not mistaken that might have been one of her first promos in front of the live crowd it, it couldn't have been her her first but i'm sure she hasn't cut too many in front of like actually in front of the the crowd you know what i mean uh but uh it was it was really good and then of course mercedes monet came out and announced that um presumably they didn't really make it clear but that she will be wrestling at, at double or nothing whoever wins against whoever wins the tbs title match at dynasty and i say presumably i i was gonna say that this will presumably be her first match in AEW. so if that is the case we're still gonna have to wait over over one month to see her wrestle which which kind of stinks but like if if they uh, are playing it safe i would rather be safe than sorry when it comes to her because yeah you can't have her uh get injured in, in her first match back that's for sure like you don't want her to <laughs> you don't want her to to pull a cm punk in wwe that's for sure um so yeah man like exactly this is why you give the the women promo time you know sink or swim like and I really do want to say this was the Mercedes Monet effect, you know, because otherwise I just don't see uh, Willow getting uh, live promo time. That's just the uh, the sad truth, man. So so props to uh, the company for actually trying for doing the you know the the bare minimum. But um, even that, like I, I that sounds like I'm criticizing them. No, this was a good segment, and I I really. Uh, I really digged it and like I said it got the crowd back into the show after two back-to-back segments that were like um pretty atrocious if you ask me um so yeah um good stuff by by all involved here and yeah I agree with everyone who's saying that you know Mercedes Monet will will thrive as a heel I guess as of just as of right now she's obviously she just had her big return to wrestling and um she's gonna be a, a face for now but yeah when she's a heel i think things will really get rolling in the talons of the big bird okay let's see oh i remember this one so let's see what was next after that hold on hold on oh no we had a uh, we had the the young bucks versus the best friends but the version of the best friends that's uh orange cassidy and trent and i think we all expect to get the young bucks to win it's most likely going to be young bucks versus ftr oh man and at dynasty but the most surprising part about this was was after the young bucks got the win the dirty win by the way they they cheated to win of course their heels trent beretta turning on orange cassidy and chuck taylor just looking on like like literally just looking on like he didn't even <laughs> he didn't even do anything bro like that was that was weird i don't know if it's gonna work i'm interested to see where they where they take this but like is is chucky e. t coming along is is are they still gonna be a tag team are they still gonna be the best friends best friends have been faces since day one man so 
honestly they needed this because they they weren't really doing anything for me anymore i i i was of the belief that best friends probably should have won the titles uh during the pandemic at some point because that's when they were like super they felt super over and super important but uh at this point they did kind of need a refresh but i don't know i don't even know if this is going to be a, a best friends refresh like i said is it just going to be Trent? is it going to be both Trent and chucky t but they turned on on orange cassidy this was crazy man like it literally came out of nowhere like no, nobody <laughs> they hadn't teased it right like i didn't miss an episode or anything they hadn't teased it right <laughs> oh yeah and then matt jackson um uh like uh teased that he was gonna uh super kick sue which was the ultimate heel move oh, okay they've been teasing it okay well dumb old me man because i i completely missed it <laughs> but uh but yeah dude i thought this was a. Uh... They teased it last year. Oh yeah, Matthew. Sorry, not not Matt. What am I thinking? They're gonna find me. <laughs> the EVPs are gonna find me. Oh, there we go. They teased it, but they went quiet for a few weeks. That explains it. That totally explains it. Yeah, man, that caught me off guard. I, I must have forgotten because <laughs> I watch I watch every Dynamite and Collision. Well, for the most part, right? I rarely miss one. So if they teased it, I completely forgot. But yeah, Young, young Bucks move on. Um, best friends are in disarray. I wonder what Orange is going to do now. Um, Orange needs to, is another one who needs to take a break because that's what I was going to talk about, guys. Like, John Moxley has only been out for like, what, a month at this point? And it's actually helped... Like, I saw his CMLL match, but I miss him in AEW. Like, and he's only been um, gone for, like, a month. So, um, breaks really, like, like help these wrestlers, man. Like, like I don't know. I don't know if a break can help Jericho. Like, at this point, Jericho, <laughs> Jericho in, my, in my opinion, Jericho just needs to go completely. But um, uh, it, it has helped for, for John Moxley. In, in my case, at least. Like, I'm like, man, that's, this is the longest we've gone without seeing Moxley, I feel like. So. I can't wait until he comes back. But, uh, let's see. The main event, well, the main event match was Mariah May and Thunder Rosa to determine the the number one contender for the AEW Women's World title. I thought this match was, was pretty decent. There were, you know, like, uh, it was... I think uh, Mariah May is like leapfrogging so many of the of the women that have been in AEW for a long time, and what I mean by that is that she's like she's like surpassing a lot of them, <laughs> despite only recently debuting. Am I alone in thinking that? Not that Thunder Rosa was bad or anything. Like she she I don't think she was in this match. Um, I thought it was a decent match. Oh man, no! Oh, I'm cooked. Literally, but uh. But yeah, like Mariah May is is gonna be like a. I don't like to use the term, but a pillar, cause that I I meant like that in the, in the general term, like she'll be there for a long time and you know holding it down for for the division. But when when you say pillar in wrestling now, it's it refers to uh, well it used to mean, the the four pillars, of all Japan, but now people are like oh the four pillars of AEW. I really wish AEW would have never done that because, because yeah, now you can't say pillar in the common term because now people are going to be like, no. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was a, it was a, a good match. Like I, I enjoyed the match. Um, it was pretty hard hitting. Um, yeah, Thunder Rosa looked like, uh, just, you know, like, like it, it, it felt like it took her a, a few, few matches, you know, to get back into the, the groove. But that's understandable. She was out for over a year, um, which I guess means I should be. Um, well, no, some people just some people just need some, you know, some some time to get it. I was gonna say which I guess I should be more forgiving to Malachi Black, but 
I did say I'll give him one more chance against Adam Copeland. I did say that last stream for those who weren't here. I said I'll give him one more chance, but after that, nope. <laughs> I will not. I will not uh, go easy on him after that. I'll be like, okay, nah, he, he can he can go. Um, so yeah, it was uh, Thunder Rosa picked up the win. I believe this is Mariah May's first loss in AEW, right? So um, it was official. And we are now getting Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm for the AEW Women's World Title at Dynasty, which is a Forbidden Door 2022 rematch. So we'll see how that goes. Then we had the um, the closing segment, the contract signing for the AEW World Title match at Dynasty between Swerve Strickland and Samoa Joe. This was a a great segment, dude. It was a great closing segment. I know people already ah oh man, what am I doing? I know people are already gonna, you know, draw comparisons with the the Rock and Cody thing just because that's the nature of wrestling fans. I shouldn't even have to bring that up, but I just because I just know it's gonna happen. Like I, I know it is. But they're they're completely unrelated. I think I actually think both segments were great in their own right. Like so, so stop. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, wait. How do you do this? How do you? So um, sorry. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, there we go. No, nope. Nope. Did I? Okay. Um, the contract signing was was sick. Um, I'm just glad that Samoa Joe is, is able to, to have this run at the top level and and hold the world title because he deserves it. He's one of the last of his era, man. And there we go. He's one of the last of his era. Still doing this at the top level because there's still guys from that era, but they're not really, you know, like uh, doing this at the high level. Him... Brian Danielson. Um, there used to be another guy in there, but uh, he kind of gets injured a lot. I think you guys know who I'm talking about. But um... <laughs> I just seen the, the funniest comment in the chat <laughs> ever. The AEW pillars are Caster, Miro, Jericho, and Billy Gunn. That's that's absolutely horrible. You're just missing a uh, QT Marshall. But yeah, this this closing segment was sick. Um, I like the fact that you know, like, just they 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 were basically you know just they they gave heat to the match. Besides it just feeling like Swerve's you know crowning moment, they they gave it like a reason for for them to hate each other. And the the ending with with you know with Swerve taking a beating, damn, that was sick, dude. I I think they they did that really well, and. Even with uh, Swerve signing the, the contract in his own blood. <laughs> like, dude, that was sick. And then uh, Samojo coming back to, you know, to hit him with the, what was it, the Uranagi uh, through the table. Just just a great segment, in my opinion. And, and yeah, we ended the show with, uh, with Samojo standing tall as the world champion, as he should, man. Building up this match. Samojo deserves this run, like I said. Couldn't be happier for him. And that was AEW Dynamite. That was my review. Okay, bye. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, guys. That was AEW Dynamite. Like I said, two really awful things, but the rest was either good to excellent. So, so I, uh, like I said, I wouldn't know. Like, it, was it a five out of ten episode or a six out of ten episode? I don't even know. I'm. That's where I'd be conflicted. I. I don't. Um. It's not like it matters. I don't give these uh, dynamites usually uh, a rating like that out of ten anyway. But, um. I guess I'm just trying to, to, articulate just how weird of an episode it was, in my opinion.
there were MJF chants. There were. Yeah, this isn't a review. I know people are gonna be like, "What a horrible review!" <laughs> yeah, guys, I don't, I don't review these shows. Come on now. Thanks for reminding me, dude. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> ratings merchants, are we? Smooth? Yeah. <laughs> um, shout out to Tiger Style Pro, who was apparently hired by AEW. We were just talking about this in the last stream. For those who don't know, Tiger Style Pro is a phenomenal video editor. He makes sick video edits. Um, one of my favorite ones that he ever did was the, uh, Taylor Swift anti-hero, uh, CM Punk edit. <laughs> um but besides that no nah, like he doesn't like that one was a funny one but he makes like legit sick edits dude like um his one for sting um the night he retired was was just phenomenal if you guys don't know tiger style pro um go ahead and and like look him up on social media i'm sure he's like on instagram or or what youtube might be on tiktok he's for sure on twitter um but yeah dude like th this this is this is so cool that that AEW actually brought him in. He has been putting in the work, and uh, everybody has been campaigning for him to join the company because his work is just phenomenal. And I can only imagine what he'll do now that he has actual access to the to the video archive for AEW. And yeah, dude, like, um, I'm just I'm happy for that guy. Like that guy deserves it. So shout out Tiger Style Pro. Look up his stuff if you guys don't know. He makes phenomenal work. <laughs> Tranquilo for Booker next. No. Honestly, at this point, I've I've talked I've talked bad about too many wrestlers in AEW that I don't know if they would ever bring me in. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm being honest about that. Like I was thinking about that, and I was like, "Nah." Besides, I don't even know what I would do for them. Like, people were saying, "Oh, we're telling me you're next," and I was like, "No, I don't. I don't know what I'd be, what I would do for them." I actually kind of prefer being my own platform, if that makes sense. I wouldn't just want to praise everything about the company twenty four seven. If I'm being honest, man, I'm trying to catch this. <laughs> my commentary over the vids maybe if i could do like a one-off i would do it but not not ah oh, i really thought i had it but not not like uh, full time i don't think besides they have a, they have a good amount of guys doing that already there we go browsing that's a low blow dude cody was gonna turn heel <laughs> until um Plans changed. Now, uh, give me uh, twelve ninety nine dollars. The AEW releases, yeah, true. So AEW did their first round of releases. Um, in that list, sorry, I'm not gonna remember everybody, but uh, the the names that I do remember off the top of my head: Jose the Assistant, um, Dasha Gonzalez, which I think was the most shocking one, only because. She had just done Collision this past Saturday, hadn't she? Anyway, uh, she was on that list. Uh, Parker Bordreau, is that how you say his last name? Um, Slim J. Um, who else was in there? Anthony Henry. How could I forget him? He was, he, so he was released while injured and that is truly truly like like messed up unless they're for like well no there's no there's no justifying this i'm not I'm, I'm just gonna say like i at bare minimum they shouldn't have released them like at all like let me make that clear that he should not have been released at all but at bare minimum i hope they're helping him cover his his medical fees or whatever but um that's besides the point like these these releases were the boys were yeah the boys Dalton Castle's boys were released. Stu Grayson. Thanks to the chat for, for giving me all the names here. 
Um, these, uh, yeah, these releases were, were super disappointing, man. Like, what can I say? Like, this was, I know uh, people were, were, were pulling up a quote from Tony Khan where he said he would never release people. I'm not trying to defend him. The, the last thing a billionaire needs is, is me defending him. Uh, but uh, people are misquoting him. He said he would never release people during a pandemic. He he actually said there will be a time where AEW might have to release people, but not during a pandemic. He did say that. So, um, like I said, I'm not trying to play uh, defend the billionaire here. But, um, yeah, people were misquoting him. With that being said, it's still it's still crappy. And I wish AEW hadn't done it. And like, I don't know, man. Like, like these people, like s the, some of the names on this on this list shocked me. Like, and that's not to say some are more important than others, but some were in more prominent roles than others. And and I'm just like, what? Like, that's crazy. Especially considering that you have like people like like Jericho on every week who absolutely bring nothing to the table like i don't know I, i'm it's just super super disappointing from AEW. but that just goes to show guys they're not a a company of saints or anything tony khan is not a uh an, an angel <laughs> like some people have made him out to be i do i do think he still gets you know a lot of undeserved hate for for like such dumb reasons but when it comes to something like this i think people um are are more than free to to call them out because it's just it's i i don't know i think any any company just you know cutting wrestlers i think is is very unfortunate i'm gonna i'm gonna say it when wwe does it and i'll say it when AEW does it like at least respect the deals bro you don't have to re-sign them but this just goes to show that they're moving in a direction that's more in line with like, you know, your typical um, multi-million, possible billion when the New Deal comes in company. So, Dasha was messing up a lot lately, but it like still, I would like, it wasn't like a fireable offense. Like, I don't think that uh, justifies... But who knows, man? Like, it's just very, very, very unfortunate. And, and yeah, like, I'm not I'm not going to defend AEW here. I'm not going to be like, oh, you know, like, like oh, every company does it. Like, that's not a good thing, you know? Like, like I said, I called it out when WWE does it. I'm going to call it out when AEW does it. Like, it, I just think it's dumb that people were saying it all oh, Tony Khan did it because of CM Punk. Like, be for real, bro. Like, that's that has nothing to do with this. Be for real. Shinku says the Latino community hated Dasha on commentary. I do, I do know that. So, so yeah. Um, I know they said that she wasn't like really good. Either way, I, I don't think that. <laughs> I don't know if we're trying to justify her firing here. I, I don't think that's fair. I don't think we should be trying to justify any of these firings. Like, Tony Khan signed them at the end of the day. So, so yeah, like he, like I said, you should have just at least honored their contracts and just, you know, let them go their separate ways once, once it was done. Stu has been released two times now. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. This whole thing with... uh, It was... uh, And they picked, like, the worst day to do it, too. Because, yeah, you had, like... You had dummies saying, Oh, it's because of CM Punk. Like, just be for real, bro. I did read that report of Stu apparently not wanting to work. Uh, shows but at that point bro like if you're really if it's really to save money if you're really trying to save money get rid of get rid of miro and 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 malachi and and buddy i know you can't do the house of black because they're in a pay-per-view match but like you know these guys clearly don't want to be there like and i'm sure they're making 
like way more money than the people they got rid of like i don't know i just don't i don't understand <laughs> yeah cody is uh did you guys hear about cody defending AEW? and he he basically said nah like uh what do you say that he he i don't want to misquote him but he ba i'm paraphrasing here so but he basically said he disagreed with punk's viewpoint on the elite and aw obviously cody is one of the founding fathers so shout out to cody bro i know we all laugh and say it'd be funny if he loses again but <laughs> he re-signed with wwe so i i, I hope he gets the title because uh i I, he, I think he deserves it and the sooner he gets that story done too <laughs> um by the by the time his next deal is up um maybe he'll come back to to aew i always said he would re-sign with wwe I, I don't think there was ever a realistic chance he would he would come back to aew not 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 without winning the big one first in, in in WWE yeah Co I mean Cody's like I think people underestimate just how close he and the Young Bucks were at a time like those guys were you know I think they were the closest of 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 the elites when it came to uh Cody's side. It was him and and the Young Bucks for sure. I mean, come on, they did the original all in, bro. They're the ones who financed it. It was it was them three. Kenny wasn't involved in the in the financing portion of of the original all in. So yeah, it's like how he always says, you know, they're forever bonded by uh what they created and i think that's a that's a great way of putting it yeah i i read that that he never considered coming back that's basically what i what i'm saying like like why would he why would he he's in a top spot in wwe right now well he literally said that he's in the spot that he's always dreamed of he can always come back when he's like, um, you know, in his last run or something. And and I think I still think that would be cool if he comes back just after he gets everything out of his system in, in WWE. Because there's going to come a time when he wrestles everybody there. And and at that point, a lot of WWE, a lot of AEW names might jump ship to WWE and he'll be like, OK, it's time for me to go back. <laughs> You know, a lot of these young guys are jumping over and I need to go finish the last story. He's basically like <laughs> Cody's playing a video game right now and he's just, you know, collecting all everything. He's beating every level. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not saying he he needs to come back, but I, I would just I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if he does come back is what I'm saying. And I and I would I would uh, I would be happy if he comes back. But it's not something that I like, you know, I'm demanding. I think the bigger news is that uh, Drew McIntyre most likely resigned. He's on the poster for uh, Clash at the Castle, which is in June. So yeah, like I said, I, I never expected him to to leave to leave the Fed. Why are why are people so um uh like back and forth on, on Cody winning at WrestleMania? I thought it was like guaranteed at this point. Is it not? Am I watching any shows this weekend? Probably Supercard of Honor for sure. And then maybe WrestleMania Night 1. But that's probably it. Are those all the shows?
I really think there's no chance that Cody loses. Steven says, I thought it was guaranteed last year, Trank. That's a good point. But this year is different, right? Like, they, like, I guess my mentality is surely they can't do it again. They won't do it again. <laughs> but then it's WWE. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like uh, they want to do a, a plot twist M. Night Shyamalan, but it would be uh, the happening M. Night Shyamalan. Smooth, you'll be at Supercard? And you'll be at WrestleMania, huh? Cause, cause you're a Fed shill. <laughs> Smooth the ultimate Fed shill. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, that April Fool's video, man, like, uh, some of the responses I've gotten have been so funny. Like, uh, and and I know, you know what I know that uh, <laughs> some of the mad responses, I'm sh I'm so sure that some of them clicked on it, uh, thinking it was like a legit video, like oh. Let me watch another AEW hate video. Like, <laughs> and then they click on it, and it's just me being sarcastic, and they probably got all sad. And then they leave, like, an angry comment. That just makes me laugh. But yeah, man. Um, that video ended up morphing into the video I, I had kind of been talking about for a few months now, where I kind of wanted to call out all the all the fake YouTubers who um, who just clickbait kind of turned into that where I was just parodying them and I basically called them all out but I also um I also did their job better than than they ever could I clickbait better than clickbaiters how is that possible hold up hold up <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> I saw your comment on it too, Smooth, by the way. I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, man. So that video, um that video I don't know, I couldn't I couldn't stop laughing when I was making that video. Like it was just so it was so dumb. Like and people got mad, like people <laughs> I've gotten a few cringe comments. And I'm like, I'm like, if you're calling it cringe, you're calling all your favorite YouTubers cringe because I'm just literally copying what they say. Literally, that's all I'm doing. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, Steven, I saw that. A lot of people were like, like, uh, oh, what were they saying? It, like when like <laughs> yeah they were just saying like yeah oh AEW is actually dying though like no it's not bro <laughs> like I literally put the stats in 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 the video for people who prefer graphs over grabs bro like I played their game too and 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 even then they're still like spouting nonsense it's ridiculous you can't win with that fan base like I I'm sorry but uh. Hold on. Shining atop the pyramid. But they're literally, I don't know, they're they're kind of dumb. I hate to say it, but Oh, damn. People always bring up that uh, Roman Reigns is gonna pass uh, Hulk Hogan's reign if if he retains at Mania. But what good does that do? It wouldn't make him. It wouldn't make him number one. It would just make him number three in a list. And and what's the benefit in that? Like I could, in other words, the record wouldn't be broken. Like he would just be in. He would be in number three. That's not breaking a record. Breaking a record is being number one. So um. Yeah, I see that point get brought up a lot. Like, oh, he's going to beat Hogan's record. I know what people are saying, but uh, it just, I don't, oh, no. <laughs> oh, damn.
AW Exposed should be my next video. No, I, I think I got all of that out of my system. I want to go back to writing about things I like and actually bringing insights into things instead of just clickbaiting because I have no talent. Imagine they set up Roman versus Hogan instead of Roman versus Rock, though. Beast. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding, y'all. Don't come after me. No, bro. Okay, at least I survived. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, I don't know. The whole thing with uh with Roman retaining, I just don't see a... Uh... I mean, to be fair though, there was no good reason for him to retain last year, and they and WWE still had Cody lose, so that was that was uh top five worst uh booking decisions I've ever seen, for sure. So if they do it again, I wouldn't doubt it. Would they do it again? I mean, they are kind of dumb. <laughs> JD? Why do you guys watch that guy, bro? <laughs> you know, I was thinking... I was thinking was... Was wrestling YouTube really that cooked back in the... Whenever he started that, that he... He was the one that, that gained a following. He was the one that his channel blew up. Like, was there really not, not that many options back then? <laughs> like, I just, I, I never have been into his stuff. Like, out of all the older channels, I think one of the only respectable ones is, like, Wrestling with Regret. And uh, Solid Monster is pretty cool. I, I disagree with him sometimes, but I don't talk to him or anything, but he's not, he doesn't, he doesn't dwell too much into the, like, the clickbaity stuff. He just gives his opinions. Yeah, wrestling, um, wrestling YouTube is, is horrible, <laughs> and I'm part of that too, so, <laughs> I am a part of that. Have I talked about the all the important stuff, guys? We talked about uh, Dynamite. We talked about the releases, CM Punk's interview, um, kind of WrestleMania. Who's going to watch WrestleMania here? I know a lot of you are. Don't lie. It's okay. Like I said, I might watch night one. It just depends. I don't know, I just, that guy, I don't know, JD, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I, Brian Zane standing up to Cornette earned, 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 like, all the respect in the world for him, for that. <laughs> Still debating it. Donnie says, not me. Jay says, oh, wait, sorry, Jay's. <laughs> Yogurt says, I'm only interested on Cody versus Roman. Not watching Mania at all, says Dio. Shinku, not me. To be honest, I don't care about it. Steven says, I'll watch night two, maybe. Smooth says, brother, what is WrestleMania? <laughs> <laughs> Apollo, not me. Stop it, Padrino. Becky Lynch and and Rollins are not going to sign with AEW, bro. Stop it with that nonsense. Stop it, dude. <laughs> Not 
not gonna lie, I'd be pretty, I'd be pretty um <laughs> disappointed if that were the case <laughs> if they signed with with AEW. Nah, Jay, don't get me wrong, dude. <laughs> yeah, you were just you were just talking about something else. My bad, my bad. I I I, I read your comments, Jay. Don't worry. <laughs> I read all your comments. You'll be there night one live. That's what's up. Night two is Cody versus Roman. Tyler Black beating Osprey would make Trank happy. You guys just know how. You guys know the right things to say to uh <laughs> to trigger me. <laughs> you guys just know the right things to say. This little guy right here just gives you a star for no reason. I always remember that from my childhood. Check it out. There you go. You just talk to him. <laughs> AEW doesn't need more double agents. Perfectly said. Perfectly, perfectly said. Tyler Mid. <laughs> Can we trade Becky for Miro? No, we cannot. What kind of a trade is that? Um, um, Walter for Miro. That's fair. That's fair in my book. No way. That's a wild spoiler. <laughs> I won't. I, I mean, you guys are in the chat seeing it, so I don't know if I should say it out loud for those who are going to be. <laughs> Why is Dave Meltzer in Super Mario? What are you talking about? Who were you talking about? That's the thing about AEW's roster. A lot of them are are um, about to like you know push forty, turn forty. So that's why they're probably desperate. They were probably well, nah, they weren't desperate to sign Osprey. They they gave up pretty easily actually. They just they're they just don't have the money, bro, or they don't want to spend the money because they don't want to pay wrestlers. They're cheap. They are cheap skakes. Cheap skeeks. Did I say that right? People seriously still think that MJF is going to go to the Fed. Like, bro. Like, are, are WWE fans even real? Do, do they... <laughs> do they... Do they live in reality? Walter for Miro. Best trade ever. Wait, is there is there a is there a graph merchant in the chat, y'all? <laughs> I just got word. My bad, my bad. Bro, these guys are like Drake fans, bro. Or like Taylor Swift fans. <laughs> They're like they pull out the they pull out the <laughs> the annual <laughs> revenue to say no -uh, this is why this is better instead of talking about the quality bro like bro just because it makes the most money does not mean it's number one bro well just because it makes the most money doesn't mean it's the best is what i meant sorry because <laughs> yeah if it makes the most money it is like <laughs> objectively the biggest that doesn't mean it's the best though go watch my video go tell i gotta go watch my video <laughs> yep by their logic <laughs> mcdonald's is has the best burger ever <laughs> P 
Prince outlived Mike Jack. Shout out to Kendrick Lamar. K dot. Drake still hasn't responded, bro. <laughs> it's been how long now? Has it been two weeks? Are we going on two weeks or three weeks? It's been a while. He hasn't responded. WWE is teasing Prince Puma returning. Can they even do that? Yeah, <laughs> Shingu said, "Throw the baby penguin if you hate the Fed." <laughs> you know what? I think we all did that at, at once, though. <laughs> the 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 throwing of the of the baby penguins but thanks again for the super chat shinku yep my tie my top five rappers now um my top five rappers are <laughs> hold on I said, hold on. I'm not going to lie. I, I was trying to think of like the worst rappers ever <laughs> and give you guys a fake list, but I can't think of anything. <laughs> but uh, a top five, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can give you a top five. Julia is going to the Fed. Yep. <laughs> Tyler Black. Do I really do that? Do I not call them by their Fed names? I I don't like I I sometimes I call Walter Gunther, but I don't know I still I still think that name change was was unnecessary. Remember when Jericho was like Walter's a dumb name? Jericho's so dumb, bro. Always trying to like put himself over. <laughs> Someone says that <laughs> when I say Walter, they're dead. <laughs> Kills them. Bro, I just, I, I don't know, bro. Sometimes I'll say Gunther. Sometimes I'll say Walter. It just depends on, <laughs> depends on the day, bro. <laughs> There's the list. Lil Xan, Lil Pump, Tom McDonald, GEC, Dax. <laughs> That's my list right there. I've seen enough Trank vs. Jericho at all in. I quit match. Bro, I would I would uh, nah, I would win. That'd be a squash, bro. You know why? Cause I would bring um I don't know who I would bring, <laughs> but I would squash him, bro. Did I always hate Jericho this much? You know, I, I soured on him around uh, late. I want to say the late pandemic era. Like by the time the crowds came back, I was I was kind of already over him. When when crowds first started coming back in like mid 2021. So I've been over him for years, bro. Oh, damn. Damn. Thoughts on Rossi being a Fed shill? 
I mean, we all knew that, right? Like, they're going to do the little partnership with WWE. Let it be that, bro. Let it be. It's going to be all right. I just think it's funny that uh, WWE is getting, like, praised to high heaven for everything that AEW was doing has been doing for years. Like, the bar is so low for WWE... The bar is so low that we praise. They were getting praise in 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 2022 for for saying the word wrestling on their shows, bro. That's what that's what AEW is up against. I said my top five, bro. <laughs> I said my top five, Jay. Lil Zan, Lil Pump, Tom McDonald, G Z, Dax. <laughs> yeah, no, caught it tonight. We didn't get Okada tonight. I was pretty bummed. I was like, at least like a pre-tape or something, but nope. Hope he's there next week. Yeah, y'all. Y'all have any last questions? My my Trank clan or Trank, what are we calling ourselves again? <laughs> Before I call it a night. <laughs> no P Diddy. No, no Diddy right now. <laughs> no Diddy ever. I, nah, I've never, I've never been a fan of that guy, bro. Especially not now. Jaden, there's no way you think that. <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> Even though New Japan right now is is kind of like a mess, I still wouldn't I still wouldn't uh, say that. Trank Clubbers, when I'm making when am I making a Discord? I don't know, man. I I've never really been in, big into Discord. Never. I'm gonna be honest. I never really saw the appeal in it. But maybe one day you guys will change my mind. I don't know. Tranquil tranquilizers, <laughs> tranquilmaniacs. My last question is why are you bald? <laughs> I am not. I'm sorry. That's the only answer I have for you. <laughs> yeah, the Diddy line from Joe was hilarious. A space on Twitter. Nah, I wouldn't. <laughs> Trank and QT in a Cole and MJF friendship angle. <laughs> nah, you guys, you guys are too much, bro. <laughs> that's that's too far, bro. <laughs> Do I have a mullet? <laughs> yeah, every Mexican does. <laughs> phase reveal at 100k um yeah because i'll i'll agree to that just because i'll never reach 100k <laughs> i just don't see it being possible <laughs> should AEW hire a booker if you saw my last video you got my answer on that they absolutely should, but because I'm an e drone. <laughs> but yeah, guys, um, I appreciate you guys coming through, man. We had a lot to talk about. Again, sorry for my little rants for the two segments I didn't like. It's not the end of the world. Pretty sure AEW will bounce back. But yeah, just gotta hold them accountable. But other than that, yeah, it's just it's been a chill, chill night. Most mostly everything else was good, and I know when Dynasty comes around, we're all gonna be, you know, high fiving and stuff. 
virtually and be like, AEW is the forbidden term I can't say anymore because then I'll curse it. <laughs> yeah, I watch AEW just to answer your, your question. But yeah, guys, um, enjoy the rest of your day, night, afternoon, depending what side of the world you're on. And um, oh, yeah, no stream on, on, on Saturday, huh? Because uh, well, yeah, it's there's no collision and it's WrestleMania, so yeah. So I'll see you guys next Wednesday, I presume, or maybe I'll I don't know surprise stream on Saturday. We'll see, but I'll keep I'll I'll surprise you guys. We'll see. But all right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day, night, whatever, and I'll see you guys when I see you guys. Peace.